From strange UFO sightings to mysterious disappearances and a whole lot of unidentified things. Here is the top 10 concerning UFO evidence the Pentagon is hiding from us. Before we get into today's video guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Magellan TV. This documentary streaming service has full length documentaries and docu-series on so many different topics. There really is something for everyone. They cover things like science and nature, space technology and exploration, lifestyle, arts, true crime, ancient history, war history, the list goes on. There is already so much stuff on their platform that is ready for your streaming pleasure, but they also add new titles every single week, so there's always something new to binge, which I love. Taylor loves history, and this weekend as we were scrolling on Magellan TV finding something new to watch, we came across the documentary D-Day Over Normandy and decided to dive right in. This documentary gives a completely comprehensive look at one of the most famous days in history, June 6th, 1944 also known as D-Day. This documentary takes what is normally a fairly boring history lesson and makes it interesting, accessible, and totally captivating. There's a combination of newer footage as well as archival footage that I had never ever seen before, and it is all narrated by the legendary football coach Bill Belichick, and honestly, we need more of that energy in documentaries. I'm not much of a Patriots fan, but he does a great job. This documentary does an amazing job at recounting the events that would eventually go on to lead the Allies forces to victory in the Second World War. If you're a history person and this sounds like something up your alley, Magellan TV is now offering membership gift cards that are perfect for the holiday season, but are also going to be available all year round. Not only does this make for the perfect last minute gift, it is also so appropriate for all occasions. Who knows, maybe your New Year's resolution is to learn more and Magellan TV is a great way to do so. Make sure you click the link down below in the description box to get a 30 day free trial to check out just how wonderful Magellan TV is and make sure you check out their membership gift cards for the holiday season or any special occasion that you have coming up. All right, let's get into this list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Project Grudge Report 13. Okay, I've read quite a few different UFO sighting stories and stories of alleged alien abductions, and this is fully one of the most terrifying I have ever heard of. So basically, the story starts off in March of 1956 when Jonathan P. Lovett was assisting Major William Cunningham in the White Sands missile testing grounds near Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. The pair were out searching for debris from a recent rocket test when Major Cunningham heard a loud scream. His first thought was that Sergeant Lovett had been bitten by a snake, so he went around to help aid his partner, and this is when he allegedly saw something that he never expected. He recounted seeing the sergeant being dragged away by some sort of long serpentine arm that had wrapped around his legs. Whatever this creature was, it was connected to a hovering disc that was in the air about 15 feet away. The Major stood there in horror as he watched this creature and the sergeant retreat into the craft which then rose vertically into the sky. Of course, he radioed for help and while he was taken to the hospital for observation after this, search teams were sent out immediately. It wouldn't happen until three days later that they would find the body of Sergeant Lovett only 10 miles away from the site where he was said to have disappeared from. The autopsy performed on him later also only raised more questions than answers as his body was severely harmed. So of course there was an investigation that happened, and many people claim that this investigation was detailed in a 600 page document labeled Project Grudge Report 13. But the problem with this is that no official information on Report 13 exists, and the US government denies its very existence at all. Though grudge reports 1 through 12 have been declassified, along with report 14, no official mention or accounting of report 13 exists, and the story solely relies on secondhand accounts of this horrible incident. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Air Force disappearance. On the night of November 23rd, 1953, near the Canadian US border, the United States Air Defense Command noticed a blip on their radar where there shouldn't have been one. This was showing that there was some sort of unidentified object that was in restricted airspace over Lake Superior. In response to this, an F-89C Scorpion jet was sent to investigate with two crew members. First Lieutenant Felix Moncla was piloting the craft, while Second Lieutenant Robert Wilson was observing the radar. Once in the air, the pair had trouble tracking the object, which kept changing its course, which then led to ground control helping to direct them. The jet pursued the unknown object for 30 minutes as it closed in on it at 500 miles per hour. After 
a while, the two blips on the radar, one being the unknown object and the other being the investigating jet, converged into one point, and then suddenly, the radar return from the F-89 simply disappeared from Ground Control's radar scope. Shortly after this, the radar blip that was from the unidentified object also veered off and then vanished. The men who were sent to investigate in the jet never returned from the mission, and there was never any wreckage found signifying an accident despite extensive searches. The men and the jet just disappeared completely. It is said that the explanations for the disappearance that have been released throughout the years have changed and flip-flopped in what they say happened, so at this point, no one has any idea what really went on here. In our number 8 spot today, we have Dr. Brian O'Leary. Dr. Brian O'Leary is a former NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor, and he has been quoted as saying that there is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been monitoring us for a very long time, and that their appearance is bizarre from any type of traditional, materialistic Western point of view. Apparently, he also said that these visitors use the technologies of consciousness, they use droids, they use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems, which seems to be the common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. I obviously have no idea how I could possibly substantiate these claims, but they certainly are interesting, regardless of what you personally believe. And based on his education and work experience, it really is quite compelling. This could, of course, just be nonsense in order to stir up the masses, but it could also be someone who's finally telling us all the truth, but we're just too skeptical to believe it. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Roswell Incident. This whole rigmarole started in 1947, when some sort of crash took place near a ranch in Roswell, New Mexico. Shortly after this, the Roswell Army Airfield released a statement saying that they had recovered a flying disc from the ranch, but the Army quickly retracted the statement and said that it wasn't that, but instead it was just a conventional weather balloon. This was a little sketchy, but most people let it slide until the 1970s. What happened in the 70s is that a retired lieutenant colonel began to speak out. In an interview with a UFO researcher, he said that the weather balloon story was a cover-up and that alien remains were actually recovered from the crash site. There were both first and second hand witnesses who claimed that not only were there at least one, but possibly more alien spacecrafts that had crashed at the scene, that there were also extraterrestrial remains that were recovered by the military who then began to engage in a cover up. In 1994, the story changed from a weather balloon to a nuclear test surveillance balloon from Project Mogul, and it was stated that the stories of the alien bodies were probably just test dummies that had been dropped from high altitudes. I'm not gonna lie, the whole thing sounds a little sketchy. I obviously wasn't there, so I can't say for certain what happened, but someone is definitely lying. I'm just not sure who. In our number six spot today, we have the Stephenville UFO. In January of 2008, in the small town of Stephenville, Texas, a bunch of residents all saw something in the sky that they couldn't believe. In the beginning, it appeared to be white lights in the sky that were first in a single arc, but then they quickly moved to form two parallel lines. It was estimated that the lights were spanning about a mile long and half of a mile wide, but the craziest part is that it was flying at 3,000 miles per hour, which is similar to the speed of a fighter jet, but there was no sound reported at all. The government chalked this sighting up to a US Air Force flight operation, but many of the residents who saw this event on that day were absolutely not convinced and truly felt like they were lied to. Some even explained that what they saw was too technologically advanced for the human civilization. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Rendlesham Forest Incident. This incident is often referred to as Britain's Roswell Incident, and it took place in December of 1980. The incident took place in the Rendlesham Forest, which is a pine forest in England that, at the time, sat in between two United States Air Force bases, RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge. Over several nights around this time of year, actually, a number of credible military personnel reported strange and colorful lights both above as well as in the forest. Some of those who were sent to investigate the strange lights reported seeing a triangular craft at close range, and there was even a famous audio tape made of the encounter. After these happenings, the UK Ministry of Defense claimed that the incident posed no threat to national security, and because of that, it was never investigated further. What really happened in the forest all those years ago remains a total mystery, but those who actually witnessed the lights and the aircraft are said to have remained totally baffled. In our number 4 spot today, we have the unexplained UFO. In 2017, after the existence of the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program became more well known, a video was released of an encounter between an FA-18 Super Hornet and some sort of unidentified flying object. There weren't a ton of details released about exactly what happened during this encounter, but using the Raytheon Advanced Targeting Forward 
hunting infrared pod, they were able to capture an extremely fast moving white oval that was around 45 feet long. The oval had no wings and it didn't appear to have any kind of exhaust either. They were tracking the UFO at an altitude of 25,000 feet just above the Atlantic Ocean and then they were shocked as the craft rotated on its axis and flew away. There was no explanation released with the footage because it truly is unbelievable and currently unexplainable. In our number 3 spot today we have the USS Princeton UFO. This UFO sighting comes from 2004. On November 14th of that year, the USS Princeton noticed an unknown aircraft of some sort that was about 100 miles off of the coast of San Diego. For two weeks prior to this, this crew had been tracking a strange flying object that would start out at around 80,000 feet before extremely quickly dropping to hover right above the Pacific Ocean. Black Aces Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate of Strike Fighter Squadron 41 went over in two fighter jets in order to kind of scope out the situation, and when they arrived, they saw what at first appeared to be churning water, while there was just an oval shape just below the surface. After this, a white oval shaped object appeared above the water, but it had no markings on it at all. Like, no windows, nothing that would indicate an engine, no wings, and the infrared monitors on the jet didn't pick up any sort of exhaust. The commander and lieutenant commander tried to intercept this strange aircraft, but it very quickly flew away and reappeared on the monitor 60 miles away. Like, when I say quickly, I mean it was moving at three times the speed of sound and over twice the speed of fighter jets. So faster than any kind of technology we currently have. We still don't know what exactly this was, but sure a lot of us are thinking the same thing. In our number two spot today, we have the cigar shaped UFO. Let's set the stage. It's 2.45 AM on July 24th, 1948, and there are 20 passengers aboard a twin engine propeller plane that is at 5,000 feet being flown from Houston to Atlanta by pilot Clarence S. Childs and co-pilot John B. Witted. Out of the 20 passengers on board, 19 of them are asleep at these early morning hours, and everything seems to be going as per usual until it wasn't. The two pilots and the one passenger who were awake all witnessed the same thing about 20 miles southwest of Montgomery, Alabama. About a week after the incident, the pilot explained what he had seen by saying, quote, it was clear there were no wings present, that it was powered by some jet or other type of power, shooting flames from the rear some 50 feet. There were two rows of windows, which indicated an upper and a lower deck, and from inside these windows, a very bright light was glowing. Underneath the ship, there was a blue glow of light. By his estimates, he watched the UFO for about 10 seconds before it completely vanished. The co-pilot gave a similar explanation and also added, quote, the object was cigar shaped and seemed to be about 100 feet in length. He continues on, quote, I asked Captain Childs what we had just witnessed and he said that he didn't know. While this is obviously very strange and peculiar, what has driven UFO enthusiasts even more is the fact that this strange sighting was of course later investigated by the US government, but the results of that investigation have allegedly been mostly destroyed. Does that mean maybe they found something they aren't willing to share yet? Some people believe that perhaps the pilots and passenger witnessed a secret Soviet spy craft. Others believe it was definitely something of the extraterrestrial variety. In our number one spot today, we have the New Jersey UFO. This UFO sighting took place in 2001, just above the New Jersey Turnpike. On July 14th, 2001, just after midnight for around 15 minutes, motorists driving down this highway stopped to stare at the sky to witness what no one could believe. There were strange or orange and yellow lights in a V formation just above the Arthur Kill waterway. There were a ton of witnesses who were all extremely confused and shocked as to what they were seeing. Air traffic controllers initially denied that there were any flying objects that could have caused the mysterious lights, but a group that is called the New York Strange Phenomena Investigators claimed that they received radar data that night that would corroborate the story that the witnesses were telling. It may not have been aliens, but it certainly was some sort of unidentified flying object that no one had ever seen before, and there were people from all walks of life witnessing it together. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!